everybody, and uh, welcome back to another short film Saturday. We're here again on Zoom, and uh, I decided to do uh, a movie that uh, I should have put My Pet Monster on in the background, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it is My Pet Monster, which is my little buddy here. And uh, Paul's got cows and monkeys and other stuff like that. I've got my pet monster. So does Kate Phoenix. Kate Phoenix loves her pet monster. So, uh, But my pet monster was something I grew up with in the 80s. I loved it. This is the only stuffed animal I've had since I was a child that's still intact with me. And it's probably going to die in my grave with me. It's gonna be, I'm going to have him be buried with me because, you know, he's been through so much with me. You know, one of his eyes is poked out. I used to do little videos with them too. And this one dude loved them so much that apparently he reposts them all the time. I'm like, dude, no, they're so embarrassing. Huh. They're so embarrassing. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, I, I, if, I don't tell them whatever, you know, but yeah. You know. I've thought about doing a couple with the monkey. You should, you yeah. know, if you want to, it's, it's, you know, but uh, anyway, uh, my pet monster has been a big deal in my life for a long time. And, when we're doing a short film Saturday, I remembered Paul doing a little movie called Rem Lazar, Ooh. creating Rem Lazar, which is so terrible and bad. And I was like, well, you know, this is sort of similar where it's a little longer, like more like a pilot for a TV show or something, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. But it's still a short film. And and so decided to do the My Pet Monster live action 1986 movie, you know, which start was was first they thought they were going to make a i just looked it up they thought they were going to make a uh live live action series out of this it only it only lasted this one pilot you know so they just not even canadian tv would pick it up yeah but i used to have the little video cassette i think i still do of it so there's a vhs of of the show out there just like there's one of rim lazar i'm sure out there so um, but I used to love this thing and watch it all the time and uh, as a kid and uh, now as an adult, um, I, I enjoyed it still. Like it still brings back like fond memories for me, you know, as a kid, but it is not, it's not as great as I remember it. It's just, it's a little, it's a little. So you have this on VHS? I think it's at our studio somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could have shown it to us through the VHS, but. You know, I guess it but, never made it to DVD, huh? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Um, if it is on DVD or Blu-ray, I'm it should be Blu-ray because he's. Blue. Or what about the cartoon? Because it did become a cartoon, right? Yeah, I think those are available on YouTube and stuff just like this. But I don't know if oh. those are even available on DVD or not. I'm I didn't sorry. like the cartoon. Honestly, I was not a I'm big surprised. fan of the cartoon. The cartoon sort of changed a lot of it around and it, um it, it was not a he was he had his own like style of monster and it just didn't it wasn't the same as the live action i think i really like bonded with the live action you know so much that i just i couldn't couldn't see it like that so i, I didn't like it but you know it's okay. because little jonathan moody it was easier for him to imagine being in the place and being my pet monster when it's live action as opposed to a cartoon Right. Like, I can imagine it would be fun to, like, become a monster, like, I guess. And as you said, conveniently when the story and plot demands it to, you know, not when, you know, obviously it's inconvenient for everybody else, you know, especially Max, you know. And that's what the story is about. I mean, the story briefly is about a kid who uh, who's hungry and uh, ends up, um, I guess, because he was hungry would be my thing. His stomach was rumbling or whatever. And that the you, you were still, I mean, it, this was 1986, so were you even alive then? Yeah, it was 1982 is when I was born. I was four. I was okay, four years four. old when this came out. So yeah. I probably was five when I got My Pet Monster. And that's when the TV show came out. It was 87. So the cartoon, but I, I mean, I think I was too young at the time to really, like, understand the cartoon. Or whatever care about yeah, the cartoon. But. See, I was 20 in 1986 so i was yeah. yeah i was hitting the clubs listening to punk music and drinking guinness so this would not have interested me even in the tiniest yeah this was not your kind of thing but you know growing up as an adult and seeing this now i mean 
you can sort of see why family members and, oh, yeah. and kids would would really uh yeah and resonate this, was, this this was much better made than rem lazar uh, making rem lazar and uh, and actually this is you know a pretty good production for you know for uh canadian tv or canadian production so it's all very professional and you know it's you know obviously it's a very silly kids cartoony kind of a thing but you know we have seen plenty of crappy kitty movies that's one of my favorite things is uh kitty movies that are so bad they're painful especially not only for the kids but for the adults who are forced to sit through them as well yeah um, well that's why we created little stinkers at that time or you created right. little stinkers with the uh g right. larry and uh so bonnie but this this is not bad enough to have gotten on little oh stinkers. no 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 ren lazar so I... may, may have oh yeah um, but you know i'm kind of glad that it wasn't a two-hour movie and i'm kind of glad i you know i don't have the nostalgia stuff that you have attached to this so yeah so this is just a silly little thing that when i when i was trying to think of what to watch for a short film because this was not planned we were not planning to to do a short film saturday at all we just sort of decided to do a couple episodes or yeah so we decided to do that and then this uh, this became like the idea in my head like and plus this guy stays at my house he does not go any unless well he came to uh california with me but aside from that he doesn't stay at, like the studio or anything because he's my baby you know i gotta keep him close you know but um, if you look on the internet you could probably find an eye replacement for him i could but I don't, you know i kind of think he has he has more of a personality like i could get him a little patch or something you know like he's got more personality having one eye and it goes to show for me like how long i've had him like he's got little everywhere he's got little uh little holes in him and shit because he's just he's he's an old guy you know he's been around for a while you know and he's he's happy you know being here still and i just i love like i love i used to sometimes i'd sleep with him like not like sleep with him but you know sleep you know i'd cuddle with him because he's my baby baby you know i don't think you cuddle with your monkeys or anything but maybe one of your cows uh cows. no not really they're not big enough though like to yeah actually... not not for me but you know there are some folks who do they're you know like the uh, hodor managed to get some snuggles from a couple of folks yep yep and uh but yeah he's uh this this is my baby and uh this movie was sort of the i think if i'm correct if i remembered my childhood correct it was the movie that that got me to want to have this guy or at least I got the guy and then watched the movie based on him. So, so you uh, liked it so much your parents bought him for you. Probably that's that's going to be my guess, and and they probably didn't expect that I would have him for so long. But you know, he's just one guy. Like you know, if anybody said throw him out, I'd say no. He doesn't smell. <laughs> he doesn't. You know, there's no reason to throw him out. Well, you should yeah. see if it's in public domain after all this time. Maybe you could remake it and make it into like a serial killer, like uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Interestingly enough, somebody made a My Pet Monster movie recently. Okay. And it was an hour and 15 minutes or so. And it's on YouTube for free. So I don't, I think it was sort of more like a fan film kind of thing. But they did it and they had a costume and it was live action. And I was like, like they put some they put some actual like care into it so i was very shocked and and happy to see that there you, you know? go it's a, it's a, got a niche audience it does well as we said like you know kate has one and a bunch of other people anytime they see my pet monster like oh my god people my my from my childhood a lot of them know who my pet monster is you know mm. because they you know they if they didn't have one they've seen it you know. millennials yeah so oh you know it's funny i'm like the last of the millennials my year you know and then next it becomes what gen c or whatever after that you know so i was you know one of the last my last of the and it makes sense because 2000 was my you know i graduated from high school in 2000 so mm -hmm. sort of makes sense but what you mean you, you weren't 28 like the kids in this movie uh man no i didn't go high school and be 20 <laughs> 24 25 years old and be teens i i don't know i mean and they never say that the kid goes to school and that kid's a 
he's talking about his girlfriend and stuff. He never says school or, or anything. So he might still be like 20 something and living home with his mom and dad. Yeah, they they definitely know? scrubbed that language so that nobody could get too confused. Yeah. I mean, it's just, they just said he was a brother. You know, so whatever. But anyway, I, I adored him. I adored rewatching this. This is fun. Hadn't seen it in a little bit. And, you know, it was goofy and silly. And there was, there was a plot, you know, it wasn't, you know, was. just terrible, you know, or anything. I, I enjoyed it. Um, did you enjoy it at least? Did you think it was sort of cute and fun? I mean, it was cute. I'm glad it was short. <laughs> so you wouldn't, on... yeah, you wouldn't have wanted it to be like, no, if it had gone on longer, I would have, uh, yeah, I would have been not happy about it, but yeah, uh, it was cute enough though. Like I said, the performances were all decent and the production was decent. You know, it's plot wise. It has, it does nothing for me. All the right. actors have gone on to continue to do stuff. You yeah, know. a lot of them, you know, voice acting and such. And the thing is, there's nothing, even though there were a few continuity issues, there's nothing bad enough for me to, you know, get enjoyment out of crap because there's really nothing crappy about it, you know. Yeah, it's just sort of, to you, this would be more mediocre, you know, yeah. sort of thing. Like where, well, I mean, to me, um, I don't know, I guess still thinking when I was a kid, this movie was meant for kids, you know, absolutely, 100%. There were things we pointed and we were watching it. We were going, why would they do that? Well, because kids don't care. Like you said, mm-hmm. why are they walking home from the the museum? You know, are they walked all the way home from the museum? Well, the kids aren't going to be like, they walked home from the museum, mom? You know, like no kids think yeah. like that. They and just see the they just see the cut and see the kids it's doing it. different when you're a kid and you don't think about it. And then nostalgically you you allow certain things like, you know, I still love three stooges and Gilligan's Island. Those are the things from my childhood that I love. And even though a lot of them are kind of silly and don't make sense, it doesn't matter. Cause you know, they're so when you're a kid, childhood. you aren't trying to make sense of things, you yeah. know, because now when you're an adult, you're looking back at these things and you're going, that wouldn't happen. Or that, I mean, when it's a, and when it's a monster, a kid who turns into a monster, you can, pretty much say whatever you know like they can do whatever yeah, when, when curly is fighting the clam in the soup and it's squirting him in the face you're not saying yeah clams don't usually do that you just laugh you just laugh because the, the you know you're a kid and you're like and even as an adult you probably think this is made for kids so you know like you can just kind of throw all that shit out the window mm-hmm. so i i agree and and you know there's things in this movie that i think you know, where it was de- definitely just made for kids and for kids to laugh at. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the characters. The kid looked kind of like how I did back in school. So maybe that's another reason why I sort of connected with it. You know, like there's a kid with glasses that, you know, would, ah, for... yep. yeah, see, I'm already doing a little uh, Three Stooges thing for you there. You're just missing the cereal bowl haircut. I am. I I think that was my haircut back then, sort of thing. Like it's pretty terrible. So, um, I just uh, you know, um, yeah. But it's funny because they were doing a lot of stuff that kids cannot do today at all. Yeah, describe that stuff. Like, what was was some of the stuff they did? Like you know, being in public, just walking around by themselves, and you know, going through people's yards just whenever they want and their to. their parent and then the people's in the yards were like completely okay with them doing that yeah. now i'm not gonna lie though there are kids that kind of come you know go through the woods and they come through my yard and stuff like that sometimes we don't i don't know them like i'm not mm. i'm not at my shed looking at them going hey blah 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 you know are you late for are I'm you late for school again <laughs> i'm surprised obi doesn't go and terrorize them um Obi probably comes up and wants love from them and stuff. I don't know. Obi, uh, Obi doesn't terrorize people at first. You have to, you have to get to know Obi before he'll terrorize you. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. So it. Um. Uh. I don't know. It, it's one of those things where, uh, this movie did have a lot of things that were sort of not allowed to to wouldn't happen today. You yeah. said even climbing up a uh. Uh, pole and stuff telephone like a pole, telephone yeah, pole. You like kids do that. Yeah, you wouldn't let kids do a lot of these things. I I do believe there was a short uh, little person that was in the cost costume and stuff. Yay. Um, so 
I was glad um, there was just, you said one of the actors was thrown, it was in another wolf cop and he mm -hmm. also happened to have his own TV show. Um, so the people in this have gone on and um, I'm very glad that they tried to make this work. It kind of sucks that it never became a TV series, you know, like I would have, I would have dug it as a kid, you know, this would have been, part of my childhood of like, Oh shoot, it's the, my Met, Met, Met monster show, you mm -hmm. know, but yeah, uh, the two lead kids were uh, both became uh, voice actors and they're both looks like they're still working currently. Good. You know, good. So. And that's awesome. Like that's what, that's what you want from your cast. You know, people that are going to go on and continue to continue to work because they're that good. Kelly Rowan looks like the last thing she did was 2016, but um, she was in a bunch of stuff too. Yeah. So there you go. So hopefully these actors uh, continue and the people who made it, I'm not sure what, um, well, there's GT somebody, I think, or something that worked, uh, that created it. Uh, like Timothy Bond, I think, something like that. Yeah. Well, Timothy Bond was the uh, uh, director of it, and it looks like he's doing a lot of Christmas Lifetime stuff, or he did, and he, he hasn't worked since 2012, but he was constantly working after this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. He's the new Ghost Rider Mysteries? What? I need... Interesting. I have to look this up, but there's apparently one of my old other TV shows that I loved was called um, Ghost Writer. It's about a ghost that writes to people. And uh, the director of this directed an episode of the new Ghost Writer Mysteries, which I didn't even know existed. Yeah, he's a Canadian guy because he did um, Goosebumps and Hercules and a bunch of other stuff. Robo he did the Robocop series, directed that. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then the writer, J.D. Smith, um, looks like he did a lot of cartoons. Zero Man, have you ever heard of that one? Not really. Tales from the Crypt Keeper. Did the Mask, the Never Ending Story cartoon, Beetlejuice cartoon, Babar. Okay, so this dude was a... Yeah, wow, that's weird. Oh, and he, he, he created the My Pet Monster... Or he did one episode um, of the My Pet Monster TV series, which you can watch on Prime, it looks like. So yeah, okay. If you want to see it, you can see it on Prime. I'll look it up sometime and find out if it's on uh, DVD, but I don't think it is. Otherwise, I would have known by now. But uh, anyway, everybody, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we don't rate these or anything. This is just us talking about it. Um uh, so yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. I think I'll put the link down below so you guys can check it out on YouTube. Um, it's just goofy and funny and, and silly and not really anything, you know, too yeah, crazy. Show it to your kids. Maybe show it like to your it. kids. Maybe kids will like it nowadays. Maybe not though. Kids are getting smarter and smarter and like with, with stuff. So they'll, they'll start going, that can't happen. Yeah. You maybe know? Liz's kids might be interested in checking it out. I'll ask. I'll see if she, you know, I'll send it to her and see if she, her kids like it. But, um, anywho, uh, thank you guys so much for checking this out. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And, uh, have, do you have a My Pet Monster? I know I do. It sounded very wrong, but dirty. Got there a monkey. Go. He's got a monkey that squeaks. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye.